today. What's the day today? <coughs> Seven. July 16, 2024. Last week, there was nothing. Two weeks before. No meeting on Thursday because what happened this day? Football. Because it was the fourth. No, it was the fourth of July. The soccer game was on a Tuesday, last Tuesday. And today there is no soccer game. And it's not the fourth of July. Uh, I can already okay, so that's good. So today, today, what do we have? Today we have Victoria. Yes. Some uh, updates about the Orchard Harvest Conference. Uh, actually, I just uh, posted on the GitHub channel the official program of the Harvest. If you can uh, show it on the screen as well. Thank you. It's on the discussion board. So it's not uh, okay, it's not on the site, it's on the discussion board. Yes, it's and on the I'm discussion okay. board, but soon it will be on the mm -hmm. web page as well. I was looking, yeah. Well, no. Okay, yeah. and I use my end button. Okay, what do we have? Uh, first day, 8 a.m. Coffee, 9 a.m. opening session by someone. Committee award, 10, 11 to be announced. Yes, uh, that's the only part, but it will be soon announced as well. And uh, so we will have morning sessions and afternoon sessions. Between there, there will be a lunch break. And um, on both days, we will finish close to 6 p.m., a little bit earlier, if we can uh, be right on the schedule. But uh, I think there will be really interesting uh, topics. And also on the second day, uh, sorry. So on the second on the second day, the last program will be a hackathon in the afternoon, uh, where you can collab collaborate. We lost Victoria or someone is doing so much noise that she had, she had to mute herself. <laughs> yeah, someone sorry. Or our, I don't know if you, yes, that our dog is barking. Yeah, ah, sorry, that's but okay. I let, think she let the dog bark. it now. <laughs> yeah, uh, so well, uh, there will be a hackathon where you can collaborate uh, with the fellow attendees as well. And uh, I also wanted to mention that you can purchase the early bird uh, tickets until the 15th of August. So you, you have a month, but we are getting closer to it. And I hope that we can meet a lot of you at the conference and take time to check out our uh, programs. Thank you. I only care about the okay one on one day and one on the other day. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I paid attention. <laughs> and we're done. Two on the same day. Haha. Uh -huh. Yeah, and but one of 
them a little bit uh, uh, smaller tasks. And uh, it doesn't matter. It's still some he did, he didn't, it's still somewhere. He didn't tell me that it's a problem, so <laughs> okay. I hope it won't cause any problem. And more time that than we took last time for lunch, which I like. Yes, yes, one and a half hour lunch, and both day we will have a cup coffee break as well. Uh, I, and I, also I, I had it. <laughs> go on, sorry, I, go on. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to mention that I I forgot to mention first that uh, on the the first night we are organizing a social event, a dinner together as well. Yeah, I saw this one. Um, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Any demos? The peaks questions we'll see. Status. Uh, I don't want Fork to update anything right now because it might take some time. So last time was July 2nd. Not much since then. Let's see. 10 updates, wow, in one go. 10 um, dependency updates. Fixes, okay, let me double click there. And go back there. Here, fixes missing dependencies in the shell blueprint. George having fun. I think we triaged it. We talked about it during the Thursday meeting. I can't see my mouse here. Can I? Yes, I can. Um, missing feature. Is it the thing that's reverted? I, I, I'm not even sure. No, it's not reverted. OK, that's assigning. Some startups were not executed. That's because they were not assigned to a member. Yes. Okay, I remember this one. So now it's fixed. Remove target from link field index because because that made me mad and Mike wanted me to not be mad. So this was removed because we don't add more stuff to fields. They have to be um, light the less things we can do. This is something that could be added as another field to any field to define a target like an enum, boolean, whatever you want, but we don't have to add things indefinitely to fields. They have to be lean. Um, fix the manager script. Some JavaScript issues, scripting issues. Multiple issues apparently with script dependencies, splitting scripts. Steam manager which was already existing. Oh, for the Orchard Themes module, <coughs> to list the themes, OK. Cool. Can you still hear me? Yes. OK, that's well, because my Noise cancellation just kicked in and I don't I'm not sure what happened. Uh, this one added unit test for plating the type feature provider. Oh, thank you because I told you can you add some unit tests for these things so we don't regress them because they are tricky to, to catch. Yeah. It's very basic, but 
at least test, yeah. a test is a test yeah if it was failing before the fix then we are sure that we want to re regress the fix the yeah, yeah. the feature that right. uh, save you cool and you saw that there were a bunch of tests already so you just have to copy some of them and replicate what they do but with different settings like oh this startup no it's it's separated so, it's it's different It's testing the uh, that the type feature provider is actually filled. It was not tested before. Okay. Type feature provider. Okay, cool. Thank you. Remove sets. A startup task button for non-event activities. Oh, remove set a startup task button for non-event activities. Okay, so you can't set a non-event activity as a startup task anymore. Okay, cool. That's an improvement in the UI. Fix GraphQL workloads when database schema is configured. The where close was wrong. The SQL was incorrectly created. Interesting. When database schema is configured and there is a test, amazing. Fixed non debug version. So, so the same contributor, three different complete changes. Interesting. Resource management options. This is concerning, meaning we need to look at what's happening here. So, the require setting, they are instantiated with resource management options now. Optionally, ah, which is scary. I don't like it. At the same time, I don't like it, but there was a concept of the option. Oh, we were just taking the options we wanted to put there, and now we are copying them. I don't like it. If it's set, it's, I don't like it at all. It's a hack and I don't like hacks. Where is that? What is it fixing? Let's see if it still makes sense or if there is no other option. Um, where is the pull request? What do we have? Okay, so we're not inherited by dependent resources. Okay, I can understand that, but Okay, the bug is at least in the correct order, which is it might load the production variable, the, the production value instead of the debug value, which is the better options, the better of the, the two options, but okay. And then, so apparently, this is because something is not inherited, so 
this is when we have a dependency options debug mode equals debug mode so this is copied and here when we call new so just fix the bug don't add a new feature so i think the bug here is this thing here you see when we create when we do this is a class require settings this is a constructor for require settings that takes options and what we do here is that we take the options properties and they are assigned to the required settings so the required settings has the same properties or the ones it needs from the options and then it sets it and apparently we can create a new require settings from an existing one like cloning it so when you do require settings dot new you get a clone so this is the previous code here you get a clone with the same name same type same location same position but what about the other properties here they are not passed around so the code here is just saying oh yeah just take the options if it was set and set it on the create a new settings with the options which will call this constructor and copy all the properties so instead of doing that here this code you just change and you do the same thing in the constructor or okay well i would say take the options and and create it again but yeah i mean okay i see the i see the the point here it's not exposed okay i'm not against this solution i didn't see that the options were not exposed but we still take a reference i mean ah, that's kind of sad it's kind of a hack still it's like because if we don't have the option if we create the settings without the options then we can't create a new with the same property so that's still because we can create an option with uh, a require setting without options it can be null let's see Do we not want to copy all these things? Maybe not, but that's okay. The new should handle that. So yes, we can create the settings without options and then call new. Oh wait, this is the, the previous one. The, this is a new one. Uh, well, okay, so we could, this is a new one, we saving the options. And now it's calling that. This was already the case. Um, so I will just put the comment there. Um,
Okay. Bump dependencies. Bump dependencies. This and kit everything. Cool. Net eight zero seven. Visualize compressed documents correctly. Correctly, meaning it was not correct before. So checking apparently if we have the GZIP headers before the serializing. Default document serializer. So we apparently uh, zip, GZIP the JSON documents. Do we actually need that, a new memory stream of data? Well, data is already instantiated, so there is no cost of creating a memory stream out of it. Um, so that's okay. It's compressed by checking that it has the headers. Sequence equal take, sequence equal. That's link. Maybe we could use um, read only span here by doing data dot span because it's a byte array, and then you can do starts with and pass directly the byte array, and even initialize it with a read only span here, and that will work probably even better. Okay. I trust Mike. So just a comment here, if Mike listens to the meeting, if he's not here today, about maybe using read-only span instead of link here. Just because it can only be faster. It won't be visible, but just to learn how to do that. Reuse static converter instances and use non converters in document chosen to realize an option. Instance, instance, instance. So we're using the same converter. Okay, like a better pattern. Oh, oh what is that? Non converters. Okay, just to simplify the code. Meh. This is only used there, so yeah. Well, now it's a static instance, so it's reused. And then, okay, no, it's not just used there, it's used also there. Okay, good. Uh, fix Elasticsearch query API. We'll trust Mike on this API. I think we talked about it on Tuesday, on Thursday. Fix expand the object property access. The commit messages should be a little bit clearer and not just fix. Or every commit could be called fix. Fix that. Maybe explain what it does actually. What was broken, not fix, just fix. Not a fan of that. What is that? That was already the case. But yeah, that's the, the thing I didn't like about the customization of the script to change the username property, the user properties. Now we check specific properties like username. Ah. And properties to update. Yeah, that was super hacky, that also. Uh, remember the PR. Fix sitemap import export. Fix what was broken. What was not working. Just 
JSON serialization again. Okay. So for instance, it could be fix JSON serialization of sitemap. Okay, removing invite from form from tenant API controller setup. So now the setup API view model has a recipe as a string. Okay. Then file name. Where is them file name created? Path dot can get temp file name can we delete it after that do we delete it after that we are not deleting it after that and i wonder if we can delete it or if it has to to be to be on the file system after this method. I don't think so. It's, it's no, yeah, we forever, have to. Is it? I believe we have to do it because then you see get directory name. Uh, at, yeah, I don't know. We, we need to look into why it's not deleted. Maybe there's a reason. Uh, ideally, we could say like re register a custom callback on the request is done. So we can delete it after that. Unless this just saying, okay, we created the file with this execution ID and then you can download it. But I don't believe that would be the case. Or maybe it is because we return the descriptor with the file name. I'm not sure. I know there are limitations with this one in the number of items you can create. So at, the, at some point, this API will fail saying you can't create one more. But, 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 today I talked yeah, with someone 60, about 65,000. It was fixed a few weeks ago, or no? In twenty, no, it was fixed in eight zero, or in twenty twenty two, maybe before. Because yeah, uh, I saw that uh, today. I was talking with a colleague about that actually. Interesting. <laughs> See, so that if you create more than these files on Windows on .NET seven and earlier version, so it was fixed in .NET eight. And I saw that he sent me, and it's really because he sent me the link like in two seconds to the fix because he worked on it. All right, how do you know that? Um, pull request closed. Here, this is the one I looked at today. That's so crazy. And uh, yeah. And explaining also why it's happening. Mm. 
see these files, these are typical. When you see these this file names, you, you know what we mean. And then he's explaining the entropy and six charge, and now it's more than that. You can even have a prefix now. Um, well, what's funny is that there is another API that is new in .NET 8, which if you don't know that you should use, I didn't know about it before today either. Um, this is directory dot get them or are we something? Let me check. One second. I have it there because I did a change a few hours ago with that thing. So if I look at there, what is the name directory create temp sub directory so this thing here this is new and this is better if you want to create a temporary folder you use that thing it's better than say path that get temp folder and then get random file name then you get this one and it's better for security also. And then you have a prefix so you can prefix your temp files with something that me that is meaningful for the feature. This way you will find those temp files more easily than just what is the debugging and what is the temp file. No, you, you just add a prefix and then you like orchard and then you will find where the, the temp files are created. This is easier. Interesting. That's great. That's great. And this one is new in net seven. And it's also better for security because it defines some uh, correct permissions to the folder. So users can't abuse the folder permission. I don't know why, but yeah. Awesome. So just sharing some knowledge I got today. Um, fixing async voids. Okay, where do we have them? Configure method, get to wait or get results. That's the way you do it because configure is not async. So that's good. Okay. And this one is made async. That's good. Perfect. Fix lost return URL. We match it today. There was a page for content localization. I think we demoed it maybe during this meeting on the Thursday and we saw the the issue, the return URL was lost. So now it's handled correctly. Good job, Maxime. The first iteration they made was using temp data. And I said, do you really need temp data? And they managed to just flow the return URL through the URLs. So that's great. And a new contributor automatically added. Beautiful. Questions, comments, topics? There is one topic. Two zero. Two issues. I thought there was one. Uh, Lucin Elasticsearch feature. I think it's for the parts. And this one contains cause and the middleware was not found. Supports calls five days ago.
Okay, cool. So Kevin is on that. That's great. Kevin knows about it. I like it. Uh, I don't like the fix. This enables okay. any safety check. <laughs> We'll see on Thursday, but Kevin knows. So if Kevin says we have to follow, unless George, you are the new Kevin. No, no, I'm not that. I think the right you know thing Kevin? is to, to add a dependency for course to the open ID, as he says. Okay, we'll see on Thursday, but yeah, we just need to see if it's a two zero issue and what can be done in the two zero time frame. This one. This is the crevice oh, uh, problem we uh, talked about. Okay, so we'll see on Thursday, and that's the last PR. Assign to two zero, maybe. That's preparing the release. That's this one. The scary one with 112 comments. It's a lot back and forth. I made, <laughs> I made a mistake apparently by suggesting it would be easy. It was not easy. It was not. Ah. The design it was not to, it's supposed to be about design. But... No, okay, we'll see on code Thursday. the design of the feature, <laughs> not UI. What else? Questions, two peaks. Um, uh, hi, yep. can you can you guys hear me? We can. Oh, perfect. So Sultan had uh, had asked me to uh, maybe do a quick demo uh, in this meeting for a source generator that I had done for one of the uh, Lombic projects. So if that's interesting, then I could do Let's that go. if there's time. Yeah, that's, what, that's why I asked at the beginning, is there any demo so we can organize the, the, the agenda with demos? So that's great. Uh, you can just share your screen and go on with your demo. Aiden. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, I'll share my screen. <clears throat> it's working. All right, you can all see good all right so yes um so i guess a little bit of uh quick background like a, a while ago um when i was starting the process of joining the lombic team actually uh, i picked this as my first issue to work on which was a terrible idea because it was turned out to be uh, quite a bit of uh like working through this and um also, uh, I'd never worked on a source generator before, so that, that was new for me as well. Um, so anyway, the the issue was was this one, or not really an issue, more of a you know quality of life little thing, I guess. So what we were doing before, and I've I've just uh, demoed it in this code as well. So for um, in in this case, what we're doing is manually setting like the the view version here. Uh, and, and then we have to maintain that version in two files, right? So here in the uh, package JSON, we have the um, the uh, this version here. And and so the 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 issue was more about 
you know, having to maintain this in, in two places, whereas maybe with a source generator, we could, we could, you know, do it in one go. So I thought that was an interesting, uh, an interesting issue to work on. I'd never done a source generator before. Uh, so I, you know, I, I started working on, uh, on this and I can kind of quickly show, um, kind of the, the thing that I've created here and, uh, and how it works. So it's, um, it's currently inside of the, um, Lombic helpful libraries um, project, but it's also like a NuGet package on its own, so it could be used. Uh, it also doesn't really depend on anything Orchard related, so it, I guess it could also technically be used outside of Orchard context. Um, so I'll just quickly uh, have the the uh, readme for it here. So kind of explaining what steps need to be you know done for it to work in in any like new project or any project that you're adding it to um so the 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 thing that you do have to do unfortunately because otherwise the um otherwise the source generator doesn't have access to it is you'll have to you know add this to to the cs proj uh or for the project that you're adding it to, because otherwise the um, otherwise the source generator cannot access that file. Um, so so you do have to add this um, so that the source generator can actually um, you know access that file and, and look for the for the version. So that's uh, that's one thing that you need to do. Then you know it's obviously adding the the project, so there are two projects actually. One is the source generator and one is for the marker attribute. Um, so you do have to add both of these projects. Um, and then like the only thing we have to do here is um, this has to become a, a partial class um, because the source generator is obviously going to create some extra source so that this uh, view version becomes available. So we will, we will not need this one anymore. Um, and then we can just add the, uh, and then what was it called? One second. We'll just copy it like this. So there are three things to this. Uh, so this is what you want the name of the constant to be. Uh, we'll just make it view version. Um, it, it picked it up right away here because uh, I think if, if you run this for the first time, you will get some red squigglies or or, or whatever because uh, it will have to run a it will have to run a build for for this to work. So. Um, so yeah, the, the name of the constant that you want that you want the source generator the, to create, the name of the file. So in this case, it's the uh, package JSON, and then the property to look for. So it's gonna go to this package JSON file, look for uh, this property name, and then returns uh, returns this one. So you can I think we can see. No, not open in browser. <clears throat> just to just to really quickly show you know this is this is what the uh, source generator comes up with so this is the um this is the partial class that it generates um with the with the view version which is this you know this name that we chose here we we could have technically chosen everything anything um and then this is what it what it created and then now we can use that view version here instead of uh, you know manually having to having to set that as a as a string and then maintain it in these both uh, places 
Um, can you show us an existing resource management option configuration file that has the two of them in the current code? Fortune. In the, in the in the orchard code, you mean, or yes, yes. Just to see where we do that already. Um, I can. I'm. I don't have an example ready. I can look if there is. Oh, let me think. For instance, we use Vue.js, so we must have Vue.js in a package JSON file, no? I can try to search us on my side. If anyone knows where we have one, just to see that we have this pattern everywhere. Uh, I think. Mm. Probably in the resource management module. Sorry, resources. I see one here that is for Vue.js or. I found the property named code mirror version, for instance. Or Monaco editor version. So does it mean that we would have package JSON view? Code mirror. Okay, I see code mirror. Monaco code mirror five sixty five seven. And if I look at the source code, five sixty five. So I found an example. Do you have Orchard uh, open here? So look at the yes. You see this one code mirror five sixty five seven. And then if you look at the package JSON file, that is just at the same level of this file. We have code mail here. So that's typically what you just mentioned, right? Yeah, so so this is um yeah, this is a, a good example, I guess, of where this could be used. So rather than uh because are we doing that here? So yeah, so so here for example as well, we're doing that version, like setting it manually, and then would have to keep it up to date here. Uh, or if we change it here, we'd have to keep it up to date here, rather. Um, we should go down on this file. We must define a resource with that version somewhere. So we can point to the local value instead of the CBN value, probably, if you search for code mirror. Okay, it's there. So code mirror, we have the version somewhere. Code mirror, add set version, code mirror version. Does the URL need that also? I'm not sure. I think like the URL for, or what was that? Okay, the, the URL itself is also using the version and then we use a URL variable in the right. resource efficient. So we use right. the version also, okay. Yeah. Interesting. And the source is the package JSON, which makes sense because we can't generate the package JSON in this case. And, and um, um, the, I would have liked also that the variable name, you don't have to set it. You just use a convention, which is the property name of the package JSON, and you add version to it, and you pass calcase it. Mm -hmm. So when you type view, then it will generate a view version. If you type code mirror, it will generate a code mirror version. If you type yeah. Monaco, then you will have Monaco version. And then if you set the variable name, it, it takes what you set in that bit. But if you don't set it, it could say, oh, I can generate a property and remove the dashes and just uppercase every, every word. And... Yeah, I think we, we did talk Maybe you about do that. <laughs> Maybe I do that, but I don't remember. <laughs> I think there was. Uh, I think that we we talked about something similar when I was working on it, and now I don't remember if we if we decided that, to do that or not, and for what reason. That make I, it even more magic, magic. So yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, that's a good point. I will. And I don't understand why you have to pass the package JSON file name because because the the source code generator cannot read anything that is not in the solution. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, but I, I guess there could technically be multiple. Yeah, I mean, I guess like in this case, we all we only ever want to look at package JSON, right? But, but I guess to have it more widely. Um, you know, it could be any any file that that you want to get a. Sure, but yeah, I'm I, I'm so I'm surprised at the same time. I, I feel okay. Maybe that's for security reasons, such that the source code generator can't access anything, but just you opt in to what the source code generator can read. So. Yeah, you mean? Sense. Oh, you mean? Um, you mean like having to add it here or? Yeah, the fact that you have to add it there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, like the the um, otherwise the source generator cannot access it. I guess it maybe it also has to do that uh, with with the case that this has to be available at um, build time. Or yeah, I don't. I'm not sure. Okay, and um, can you show us in your source generator code? Where this file name is used, the package JSON property. How it? How do you read the file from the source generator when you have the name of the file package is a JSON as a string, which is a property of the attribute? What do you do with that? Is there a statement that says read solution file, read project file, something like that? Look through this a little bit again because it's been a while since I've actually worked on this. But my question makes sense, right? Right. Okay. File dot get text uh, name and additional files that select. Okay, you saw that at, you were there. Additional files dot select. Okay, there. Ends with file name. Okay, you say additional files, give me the one that ends with the file name. Well, we... Yeah. So that can be tricky because it's not really end with, but maybe it should be exactly the same name, but whatever. Uh, dictionary file name trim. So you remove constant name, file name, property name. So you have to accept it. Attributes data as a dictionary. That feels so weird. OK. And then you say file content. So you get a file content thing okay well i get it nice thank you yeah that's a lot of code to to save a property but that's, that, that's our jobs, right? Like we do a lot of things to just uh, save people one second. Yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> if you look at it that way, it is. Uh, and it is it's, a bit also, uh, it's also not consistency, but not safety, but like process, like it saves some process. Yeah, some yeah complexity. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so, okay, great. Okay, awesome, good job. Perfect. Thanks. And that's a good start to learn source code generators to add more source code generators. I think what did I mention as a good opportunity to make a source code generator a few weeks ago? I said something and maybe I found an issue. I don't remember, but we mentioned some source generators that we could make for Trend. 
I don't remember. Ah, cool. Okay, nice. Questions, okay. comments? Anyone? Thank you, Aiden. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Well, see you everyone on Thursday. Bye bye. Great, thank you. Great. Bye. Bye. Thank bye, -bye. You. Cheers. Thanks, bye bye. bye, -bye.